This is A Game. Fast acting, long lasting, with no side effects. Hey, all my Crimsonites, and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel, where we embrace our femininity, increase our womanly values, and celebrate our brothers. So, join me on our feminine journey to learn, heal, and grow. Hey there, my Crimson Eyes, and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel. I am your host, femininity coach and author of the Crimson Cure, and this is my perspective. So what are we talking about today? Today, we are talking about why Black women's fake femininity is not fooling anybody anymore. See, you used to get away with fake femininity, and I'm going to address the situation with April Mason one last time because uh, apparently she clapped back at the lead attorney and Kevin Samuels for their critique of the things that she was saying on lead attorney's show like more than a week ago. Um, And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the clap back. And I don't want to talk about her relation with the lead attorney or, or any of that. I want to talk strictly about what she said and the many red flags of fake femininity in her post and all of the masculinity in it. Because I don't think that Miss April understands that she's been in her masculine energy ever since that lead attorney show Every time we've seen her on YouTube, I don't know what she's doing everywhere else, but on YouTube, she's been masculine. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and I'm going to read to you. This is from her faith, her YouTube page on her community tab. So we're going to read it. I'm going to try to get through this as quickly as possible. Um, this is two days ago. She edit lead attorney and Kevin Samuels. Like I said over a year ago, black males will never get an apology from me. Why? Because it turned out my cousin was telling the truth. But black males didn't go run and make videos and spread that. They immediately sided with their enemy. What happened to F the police? This is because they couldn't accept that someone that looks like them would do something so horrible and were called out on their behavior. You can't say it was, wasn't well documented if you didn't even know this has been plastered all over my social media for almost two years. I don't mind you using my name for clout, but at least get your facts straight. Scroll below to read the entire post from January 2020. I'm talking about black males, not black men. They are not the same. Black men have always held me down. Yes, women have work to do, and so do these weak males. A disgrace to the race. It was all good when I said I quit working with women because y'all thought it was a city boy win, but many of you are raggedy as well. Y'all run around here gossiping like females. Men don't have time to be on the internet making low vibrational videos about women. They heal and choose better women because they're out building their legacy, handling business, investing, networking, uh, working out, going to therapy, sleeping, evolving spiritually, and doing it all again the next day. Now, let me go back to minding my own business and living my best life like I always do. I've never had to bring any other content creator into my teachings because what you discuss is low vibrational content. It also says that you lack creativity. Besides, you are always looking for something to take out of context to fit your immature narratives, which you did. The fact that you don't even know that I'm not a Christian lets me know you don't know. do your research. You listen to respond, not to understand, but it's to be expected. As an attorney, you're in the business of twisting, concocting, and coming up with your own narrative. If you wanted to know more in depth what I meant, I would have gladly come on your show and broke it all the way down. As you saw, I was in the middle of trying to get a tire fixed in an unfamiliar location. But you really didn't want an in-depth explanation or to get an understanding. Hashtag weak. But I'm glad to see the newbies continue to keep my name in their mouth. Carry on and keep getting these monetization checks on me. Once again, a woman is putting food in your mouth because all of you are making money off the backs of women you claim to dislike. Merry Christmas. And she hashtagged them again. Okay. So I'm not going to go point for point because it's useless um, to go 
point for point with everything that she said in that post. But what I want to talk about first is not only the non-apology, which we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about women apologizing, black women apologizing to black men. But I don't, so I don't want to get too far into that on this video. What I want to first talk about is the trying to define masculinity for men, what real men do um, and what males do and what men do and all of these sorts of things. And that's one big red flag of black women when they try to be feminine, when they try to act like they're feminine. The one thing that they start doing that they can't help themselves because it's gynocratic teaching is start sort of wagging their finger a little bit at men. This is why I get the critique all the time. Why don't you check men? Why don't you talk about black men? Why don't you correct black men? Because black women have been trained that it's our job to correct black men. We're like just about the only group or ethnicity of female that thinks it's actually their job to correct and to get into line black men and get them straight and get them right and make sure they mind right and make sure they know what a real man is and what a real man isn't and all of these sorts of things when we're also the same group of females that are unable to accept critique whether it's constructive or not we are unable to take any correction. We're unable to accept any form of, okay, this is what you're doing wrong. This is how you do it right. This is what's going on. These are the pitfalls. This is how we can turn it around. Black women are so conditioned to wag their fingers and check black men that we do it in such a way where it's second nature. It's literally second nature. We literally, excuse me, I'm trying to do something with the glare. My apologies. Hopefully that helps because, you know, I'm on a laptop, not, I don't have a separate monitor. Um, but in any case, there's always this sign language that's going on. There's always this, well, well you're not doing this. Your content is low vibrational. This is what you're doing, you know, and just a slew of slant shaming language. When we take a look back and we read what she said men do, this is interesting to me because she says that men are doing, supposed to be doing this. Y'all run around here gossiping like females. It's classic sign language where anytime a man critiques a woman, a black man critiques a black woman, then that's considered by that black woman to be gossiping. But it wasn't gossiping when she was critiquing the women that had been coming to her over the course of 10 years, where she said, you know what, I'm retiring from that, that part of my business, that part of my teaching, I'm retiring from that for the following reasons. And she went on to critique very sternly black women in general, which she said was the majority of women that she had encountered within that 10 years of being a dating and femininity coach. Right. So I don't know, was that gossiping when she critiqued them? Apparently it's gossiping when she gets critiqued. Right. Red flag. And we're going to get to some other points, but I want to go through this. They're out building like this is what supposedly real men are supposed to be doing. They're not supposed to be making low vibrational videos about women because they're out building legacy, handling business, investing, networking, working out, going to therapy, sleeping, evolving spiritually and doing it all again the next day. That's her definition of what men are supposed to be doing. And I'm wondering how would she know? How would really any woman know? It's really not our place to tell men how to be men. Again, black women are the only ones that think we supposed to be telling our men how to be men as if we know better than them, as if we understand what they supposed to be doing and how it is to live their lives as black men. And we don't. Here's the next part of this. 
I see the fake femininity as an abuse of the femininity movement. And what it does is it discredits genuinely feminine Black women who are really trying to be ten toes down in actual femininity, not fake femininity, not finessing, not putting on the mask, not showing up thinking you feminine just because you're looking pretty and you put together, but your energy and the way that you're speaking is actually masculine and you can't tell the difference, those sorts of things. It is an abuse and it's there whether it's subconscious or not. And I'm not levying this particularly at April Mason, the next thing I'm about to say, but it discredits the femininity movement. That's what it does. It makes it nearly undetectable. Real feminine women makes it nearly undetectable. We become undetectable to men if they don't have a strict and very stern vetting process. Basically, if they don't follow the 4T vetting process that I speak about, they're not going to be able to discern a fake feminine woman from a real feminine woman. And these types of fake femininity, let's finesse, let's be masculine in a cute, pretty package is a discredit because when real feminine women come along and we're not having this representative, we don't have a package or a mask that falls off under pressure, then we still, it, it hurts us as black women. It hurts us trying to actually heal from all of the damage that we allow feminism to do and gynocentrism, which are stems of the white supremacist tree and all of these sorts of things that have ravaged the mindsets of black women all over, really kind of all over the globe because America is not the only place affected by this, right? It discredits that movement. And one of the ways that you understand um, fake femininity is a woman that cannot take the critique. And when we talk about, um, I'm just going to read towards the end. This is where the mask completely fell off. Okay. The last paragraph, she said, I'm glad to see the newbies continue to keep my name in their mouth. Carry on and keep getting these monetization checks on me. So it's back again with money, with wealth, right? Get the monetization checks on me. Kevin's not getting a check based on April. Neither is lead attorney. For that matter, neither am I. And both of those channels are bigger than mine. And I do believe my channel's bigger than hers. So I don't get any YouTube checks based off of April Mason's name. Hers are not even my highest view videos. Anyway, because that was a shot, a shot at the feminine women who called her out. The newbies got her name in their mouth. That was for me. That was for Chantel Simone. That was for Danica Marie. That was for Pink Book Lessons. Right? Anyway, so once again, she's talking back to Lead and Kevin. Once again, a man is putting a woman is putting food in your mouth because all of you are making money off the backs of the women you claim to dislike. So shaming for making money, same way she was making it. So when men do it, it's a shame, and women are putting food in their mouths. Women are feeding them as if Lead Attorney has not repeatedly said that he has been a twenty-year attorney. That's not peanuts. That money is not peanuts. If you've been an attorney for 20 years, especially high end, okay, not a public defender for 20 years, you've been an attorney for 20 years that could be privately retained. That's not peanuts. Okay. Here's a little bit message for April. I'm going to make this quick. Miss April Mason, it was very unwise to make a response, most of all, a masculine response like you did, to try to clap back at something that never really truly happened. You came to a public forum, which was a lead attorney's channel, and you've been in the public spotlight for years now. So critiques, constructive or not, 
comes with the territory. It doesn't feel good when you get critiqued and it's not flattering. And everybody who has been critiqued publicly understands that we know that, right? But you came to Lead Attorney's channel and you spoke freely. And after you left, those words were then analyzed and they didn't stand up to feminine scrutiny. They didn't stand up to the scrutiny. You have to understand where you are. Miss Mason, the world has changed. Not even five years ago, not even 10 years ago, you would have been able to come into a space of men and say what you said and nobody would have ever blinked an eyelid, an eyelid. But men talk, the manosphere exists and these sorts of red flags are triggering. They understand the language of women now, especially gynocrats, right? Especially women who are being masculine, especially these feminine women, I mean, these masculine women, right? That are kind of finessing their femininity, kind of dialing it back and dialing it up as they see fit, right? Even though you got critiqued, you were never, to my knowledge, outright disrespected. And so as such, let a person critique what your words are and keep it moving. If that would have been the classy feminine thing to do. Oh, they don't like what I said? Then I don't have to go back to that platform ever again. And I'll continue to do what I'm doing. World keeps on spinning. He can say what he wants on his channel. And I'll do what I'm doing on YouTube and Facebook and in real life. When I'm going to these seminars and I'm going to these events. And it is what it is. Right? That's my little message. And I haven't been in the public eye as long as you have. And that much is very clear to me. Very quickly. Very soon. <laughs> it's not what you called. It's what you answered to. Beloved. So. Sound off in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Like, share, subscribe to the channel if you have not. Once again, I'm your host of Crimson Cure, and this was my perspective. Bye-bye, Crimsonites. Hey, guys. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. And if you've got more to say on the topic, leave a comment down below. Also, don't forget to support our sponsor who so graciously supports this channel by clicking the description box and the link for A-Game at agameherbal.com. You can go ahead and get a 10% discount off of your next purchase using the code Kendra10. This has been yet another Crimson Cure production and I'll catch you guys on the next one.